So let's talk about these spells. Normally, I'm telling you guys that these spells will never work on you. And I tell you that if you're chosen, the spell work will never work on you. Of course, if you're chosen and you're doing exactly what the Lord is telling you to do, of course, it's not going to work. But if you're having rebellion or anything that is not what the Lord wants you to do, it opens a door to the enemy where he gets to come through and have a full-time party in your life. I mean, and this is why some of you guys are chosen, but you have, there are things that have been happening where the enemy has been allowed to come through and into your life to do things that he would, could not normally do when it comes to your life. But you have opened a door. There are many open doors that we have to realize if we opened a door to the enemy to allow him to just seep through, you know, the enemy himself comes in like a, you know, he's like a, a snake, a serpent. He slithers through, through the smallest cracks and come through to try and destroy your life. And the reason he's been able to do this, because I know many of you guys realize that some things have been working. They've actually been working in your life. And you've been like, why in the world are these things taking place in your life? And why is the enemy allowed? Why are your enemies allowed to torture you and harm you? But it's because some of the open doors that have been allowed in your life that you've allowed to be open, not necessarily intentionally, but there are things that have happened that were unintentionally and you allowed it to happen. And with that being said, these different open doors, let's talk about it. Some of them are generational curses. You may feel as though you've been doing everything right under the sun. Like what in the world is happening? But there are people that were before you who opened these curses through generations, like people that were before you, your grandparents, your great grandparents, people that came before you that opened doors before you. And we have to be the ones to break those generational curses. And sometimes they're allowed to come through. And this is why you see certain people having different sicknesses all throughout the family, different things happening, poverty in the family, poverty, um, you know, different negative mindsets, even mental issues may arise when it comes to people opening doors, when it comes to generational curses. That's one way. And this is why we have to learn how to break these generational curses in our lives. It's important when I tell you these things are highly important. Another thing, another thing is lying, you know, lying about something. You could simply just a little, you know, we call them white lies. That's what we usually call them, YT lies. And we think that those small little things may just, you know, why you didn't call me? Oh, girl, I was busy, you know, and you weren't busy, but you just really didn't want to talk to that person. That's a little small white lie, but you you didn't want to talk to that person. Just tell them the truth. Like, I didn't want to talk to you. You know, being honest and not lying, it could be small as that, as simple as that. And we think that we're not opening doors. And I know you think like, wow, that's a lot of legalism, right? But it's not. It's simple because the enemy seeks what he can do and how he can get in. He's looking like any little small crack. He wants to know, like, if you said that little small white lie, can I get in? You know, they can, he can actually come through at that moment because he's looking for anything for you to do anything negative. He's fine trying to find any way possible to come into your life. Another thing is stealing. Some people steal. I mean, I don't know if you're the type of person who steals things, but when it comes to that, it can be very small. You can steal something as simple as taking something from the work office. You know, you think you're taking a pen off of the desk and taking it home with you. That's a little small thing that the enemy can try to use against you. And I know it sounds crazy, but that's what the enemy waits on for us to mess up in any small, simple way. And I'm looking at my notes and the other thing would be um, fornicating. Of course, you know, I remember when I was in a relationship and I was telling this guy, I was like, I cannot, you know, we're not going to mess around because this is something, you know, considered fornicating. He, he tells me, and can you believe this? He tells me, you know, the Lord knows your heart, you know, and he's trying to tell, like, talk me into it. The Lord understands, you know, what you're doing. We're in love, blah, blah, blah. 
And that thing, that little small thing can open a door to the enemy seeping into your life to wreak havoc. And then the next moment you realize that some, all of these different things start to go wrong in your life and you're thinking it's that person. But no, it was simply because of the fornication that was done and you decided to open that door. And it's crazy, but it's true. Okay, it's true. Okay. And okay, so I got this other um, note here. Unforgiveness. This is a big one. This is a huge one because, of course, you know, we're talking about even on this channel or on this page that we keep talking about how people in your family, people that try and, you know, manipulate you, doing things against you, they don't really mean good. And we know when we find out that opens, when we find out it's a whole different ballgame because, baby, we like, I'm pissed off. I don't want to talk to this person. I'm done with them. This is why I tell you guys, my motto is block them and bless them. If you've seen the merch at the bottom, you'll see it. It's called block them and bless them. Get the merch. You have to block them, you know, when it comes to that, but you have to bless them as well. That does not mean you're not forgiving them and you're holding grudges against them. And it's important for us not to do that because that's where the enemy sees that he has an open door to come in and allow anything, any witch or warlock tries to come against you. Because then they have legal rights. These are considered legal rights, okay? Also, you have cheating. You know, some people like to cheat in relationships, cheating on jobs, cheating on the tests, even cheating. Listen, even cheating as far as getting, okay, y'all know, y'all don't heard about CPNs, like trying to get an apartment with um, a, our house with a false motive, with a false name a false something false that right there is cheating okay it's just like okay you're lying for one you're cheating to get the apartment that you need the house or whatever it is that is considered a, an open door because the enemy knows and like i said i know these are things that you are you might be used to doing but the enemy sees it as oh i got a right to um do what i need to do in this person's life and he takes it up with the lord just like he did with job he takes it up with the Lord and says, you know, I have legal right. I can do this because they actually lied. They didn't fast and pray when you said to do it. They did this. You know, he has everything to go against because it's like he's in a courtroom and he has all of this evidence against you. And that's where it comes in as legal grounds to do whatever the enemy is coming to do in your life. We have to be very steadfast and we have to stay focused on what we're doing and not doing it in the wrong way. The Bible also speaks of an undeserved curse will not land on its intended victim, okay? An undeserved curse will not land, okay? It cannot come against you. This is Pro Proverbs 26 and 2. It speaks of this because we are allowed a certain way of being protected because it's undeserved. But what happens when you, it is deserved? What happens when we are deserved those things because we decided to do those specific things that I listed before? When we done those things and we didn't understand how we allowed the enemy to come into our lives, we allowed him to do some things. And this is why you see a lot of us talking about, you know, your your family members, the things that they're doing against you. It wouldn't even be allowed if we hadn't opened these doors. I'm sitting here looking at the time it's 12 12 type in the comments 12 12 this is definitely confirmation that you, we have to be steadfast because we know that the enemy seeks to come through any door that we have opened in our lives when it comes to that we have to know how to protect ourselves like i told you guys before i'm looking at my i'm looking at my ex my um i'm looking at my notes and i'm telling you guys to protect yourself from this manipulation, witchcraft, voodoo, hoodoo, whatever you are considered is against you. Most of us are not willing to fast and pray because we are so in love with food. And I remember that my nutritionist, he said, we cannot be in love with food. We have to divorce food because food is not really a necessity. It's something that has been brought up. We, you know, we eat certain things that were not even talked about in the word of God for us to eat. And the enemy can use that when the Lord calls you to a fast and he tells you to do something. 
And when we don't do it, it can open a door to the enemy. But if we don't, if we actually decide to fast and pray and do what the Lord is saying, it will not open that door. The enemy can't do a darn thing. You know, he can't touch you. He can't do nothing to you. There's something about you being obedient to the most high and fasting at that time and using that time when you get hungry, when you get a hunger in your soul, when you feel it in your belly, you decide to go and pray in your secret place. You decide to go and do what it is that you know we need to do to, you know, just, I mean, when we come in with those prayers and we're very dominant in that area of our lives and we tell the enemy he cannot, we bind them up and loose them into the pits of hell. It works every single time. Another thing is not, you know, for you to protect yourself is for you not to rebel against God. Be obedient. Be obedient when it comes to him. When he tells you, listen, don't go off on that person. Just walk away. But I promise you the temptation of cussing that person out is going to is going to be there. And you know how it gets when those those conversations get very intense and we go off and it's hard for us to hold back. That part right there is a part of rebelling against God because he did not did not want you to do that. Especially those things will actually heighten when you're fasting and praying. You have to know that it gets very in more much more intense then at that time than any other time. So you're going to be, you know, speaking or talking to someone in something that you disagree with may come apart, may come to fruition and you guys start to argue about it and you decided to go the f off and you like girl i could not hold myself that right there opens the door y'all i'm telling you if you're not listening to anything i've said you need to hear this it opens a door when you go off you like your you get back to your old self and you start cussing them out you're going off on them you don't want to talk about it you just like baby i'm just gonna go off i'm gonna tell them a piece of my mind but the lord tells you to hold back, but you don't. You've opened the door for the enemy to come in and you start to feel a certain type of way. Things start to come, to happen in your life. And you're like, why in the world are all these negative things happening in your life is because you rebelled against God and he told you to calm the freak down. Calm down, baby. Calm down, Jamal. Another thing, it says um, most witches fast more than Christians. Do you hear me? Most witches fast more than Christians. Yeah, we're called to a fast. You know, your pastor may tell you, Let, let's fast and pray. Let's get together with a corporate fast. Or the Lord just tells you, or you just begin to think like, maybe I need to fast and pray for this because whatever this is, is really, really haunting. You know, let me fast and pray. But then you decide, oh, dang, somebody offered you this piece of whatever. And you're supposed to be only fasting and praying fruit and vegetables with water. But they offer you something like, a piece of meat. They offer you something, your favorite meal. And you're like, dang, I cannot resist this. Once you decide to not resist it, that's when you open the door for the enemy to come in. And I, like I said, I know it sounds so petty, but these things are so small, but it's easy to not do than to do it. Do you hear me? Let me say it again. It's easier not to do it than to do it. But if you discipline yourself, if you use self-control to keep yourself away from any of these things, like I said, arguing back with the other person, fasting and praying, not taking that piece of, you know, that, that dinner that person is trying to offer you, you're going to be okay. But if you decide to just get in and do what you're trying to do, eat that food, go off on those people, steal, lie, cheat. And I know, like I said, this is not a this is not one of those amen type of messages, but it's the truth. And we have to understand that we have to be the ones to gain self-control in order for us to not open doors to the enemy. Because this is why your enemies, these family members, the people at your job, the people in your community are able to stand over what you're doing because they're, they're being used by the enemy. And the enemy's like, I bet I can get them to do this. His whole concept is that I bet I can get them to do what I'm trying to get them to do. But you, be, if you do it, of course, he has legal rights to come in and try and destroy your life. And we don't want that. We don't want the enemy to destroy anything in our lives because we have a purpose to live out. We have some way, shape or form that we're supposed to be living out this life 
in a different fashion than other people. We're called to be different, a peculiar people. We're different from most and we have to continue to do so. All right, guys, so I'm going to go ahead and end it here. I'm excited that you decided to watch this video. If it actually resonates with you, let me know. But remember that a curse without a cause cannot stand, which is Proverbs 26 and 2. Check that out for yourself in your own time. But if you're living a righteous life the way that the Most High wants you to, it will not be able to stand. It will tell I me mean, you've seen so many videos. I have anyway, that the witches and warlocks will tell you, ex-witches will tell you that there are certain people that they cannot touch. And you want to be the one of the ones that they can't touch, that they can't do anything to. In order to do that, you must follow the blessings and whatever the Lord is telling you. Follow those blessings that the Lord has taught you and understand that they work and it will not work against you. Those weapons that were formed against you will never work against you because you were obedient and you did what the Most High told you to do. So be patient and listen and follow the instructions of the Lord. And he's going to make sure that everything works out for your greater good. I love you guys. I would like for you to like, comment, and subscribe, share the video, let everybody know that I'm here. And also, if you would like to give to the channel, go ahead and give on Cash Shop Dollar Sign Diva TV, or you can do so through Super Thanks, which is the heart down below. And of course, if you see the merch, go ahead and get the merch. Don't play with it. Do what you got to do to bless this channel and you shall be blessed as well. You already know it comes back to you a hundredfold. I love you guys. Be blessed. Be better than blessed. And follow the instructions of the Lord. Peace and blessings. Mwah.